an all-new episode of the Mitch Lafon and Jeremy White Show. Tuesday at noon. Available wherever you stream. All right, our next guest is a part of the group that is featured on the HBO Max original series Peacemaker soundtrack uh, alongside incredible artists like Y&T and the Choir Boys and Firehouse, and we're trying to catch up with as many of these incredible artists as we can. Welcome to the show, Augustine Nielsen from yeah. Wigwam. There he is. There you go. How One you doing? One of my favorite singers. I mean, uh, he, oh, he, his voice is just incredible. So... Uh, Jeremy, go ahead with the first question. I know you want to talk about Peacemaker, so go for it. Yeah, of course. I mean, background stuff. Well, look, I mean, the first time I, I saw Peacemaker was in the Suicide Squad movie, and then, you know, they announced his original series. So, I mean, the basically the first song you hear in the series is Wigwam, which is pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, how, how did Wigwam end up in the show, and how did that whole thing happen? Well, we received a mail like half a year ago or something, uh, and... Um... And that uh, was from from an American company that wanted to check out some songs. Uh, do you want to taste it? What was one of them? And in my dreams, you know, the come on, come on, come on, our biggest hit. Yeah. And we yeah. thought it was going to be used maybe for, for a commercial or something. But then we then we later discovered that it, they really wanted to use it for a series. They couldn't tell us what kind of uh, series it would be used for and then later when we started to deal with deal with the company uh they told us about james gunn and peacemaker and everything yeah and um yeah and then we knew it was that that do you want to taste it was supposed to be used for the main title but we did not uh, know how the main title the, the opening sequence would would <laughs> you know, turn out You're so right it, all came as a big surprise. Wow. And, uh, w- what a nice surprise because now, you know, the streaming numbers, you know, people are streaming our, our music from, especially from the States. Right. Like hell. Yeah, which is fantastic. And, yep. How, how does that change the outlook for the band? Because in 2021, you do the reunion album. You had been apart since 2014. Yep. Does does this make it now a priority to get more wigwam music out and get back on tour, or do you still go do the Queen show and the ammunition and the other stuff, or does this sort of refocus you and say, okay, it's going to have to be wigwam time for the next little bit? Yeah, definitely, because you know we when we decided to to do the wigwam comeback, uh, it had been uh, you know requested for quite a while for many years, and I've always told them no no way i'm not going back there <laughs> but then after some years we we, we got to you know, you know we become friends again we buried the hatchet and all that you know and um and um we were requested to do uh, a, a kind of a shock appearance in the eurovision song contest final in norway Oh, wow. Um, and that was what really brought us together because they really wanted us to go up there and do this shock appearance. And we thought, you know, hey, maybe we should write a new song uh, and, and perform that song with the, some of the classics. And then we decided, you know, if we're going to do this, why, why, why don't we think about doing con- maybe a couple of festivals? Got yeah. in touch with a, a, a booking company, an agent here in Norway that, you know, it... Like 15 minutes later, we were booked to the um, Tons of Rock in Norway. And they wanted to, to uh, promote Tons of Rock immediately. And, uh, you know, the Eurovision Song Contest thing didn't want us to go public with a comeback at all. Mm. So we, we were put in a very hard situation because we, we then needed to, to um, choose between, you know, should we do the Tons of Rock or the Eurovision Song Contest thing? We decided to go with tons of rock and, you know, whatever, let's just play. <laughs> and then right. came Mr. Corona himself and to control of the world. And uh, and so everything was just postponed. And while we were sitting there, we decided, hey, I mean, we're some good friends now. And how about trying to make write some more music? And and it went so smoothly. I mean, with Tron and me that we used to, you know, fight all the time. This time was like, wow, it, it, it was so, so nice to write music together again that it ended up being an album. And when we were to, to release the album last year, uh, the Corona situation was still pretty heavy. So yeah. I don't think... 
I think very, it was a very, a very kept a very secret, a big secret to the world. And and in Norway, I know people hardly recognize us releasing new mu- music because you know no live dates, nothing happened. And so with this peacemaker thing coming up, it was like sent from above. I mean, yeah. Thank you, James Gunn. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> So I mean, let me just quickly talk about head. that <laughs> before b- before we get to the whole peacemaker thing. Just mm-hmm. your whole history of the band now is about being peacemaker because when you broke up, there was a <laughs> lot of baggage. There was a lot of hate. There was a lot of shit going on in the studio. Oh, they yeah. were replacing parts or doing all kinds of crazy stuff. What? Yeah. Was, so there was there was weird stuff. So so talk about how your peacemaker part came together. I mean, is it just that you're older and just said, oh, you know, the hell with it? Or is it a financial thing where you go, you know what? We make more money together than apart. So come on. No, <laughs> it had nothing nothing to do with um, with the money at all. It it uh, you know it all came together because you know let's face it. After working so hard together, traveling so much around the world, be, having that you know that that history together, I thought it was kind of sad. Uh, I mean, not to have any contact and for us to to yeah, be like enemies kind of yeah, like strangers wow. strangers yeah That's so i started bizarre, to like work some relations. of the concerts i mean tron the guitar player had had mm-hmm. some concerts i went to them and stood in the back and but at one concert he discovered me and so one of the crew members came to me and said you know you are invited backstage I went backstage and we were, were like kind of kind of weird. A little awkward, huh? Yeah. Again. yeah a little, uh, but we we had to sit down and I had a couple of beers and started to talk about the good old times and and then we started to be, become friends again and you know meet each other for a cup of coffee. So we had nothing to do with with uh, with our career, you know. Mm. Um, it all had. It was you just know, all personal issues. Camaraderie like, again. So we started to to become friends. And I knew when we started to be, become friends again that there was some requests for us to get back together. I hadn't even thought about it. But then it started to feel so good and so sincere that I thought, you know, maybe I should mention it to the guys. You know, we've yeah. been asked maybe to do a show or something, you know. Would that be cool? I mean, not to, to get back together again for real, but just to... Maybe right, do just one do a couple thing. of I mean, yeah, like a couple of one-off shows and yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know, after a while, we you know everything feels so natural again, and so now why not? And yeah. now we are looking on you know dates. We have just been confirmed for the, the uh, contract now with um, Monsters of Rock next year. The cruise hey, that's huge. Yeah. That's cool. Great cruise. And, Great well, cruise. It is from what I've heard. They actually tried to get us on the on the boat now in February, but it was a little too too short notice. Yeah. But uh, <clears throat> and so everything has come together. And let me tell you one thing: I was asked by by Billboard magazine. You know, have you noticed any difference between you know before and after the Peacemaker premiere? Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you, no. Know, uh, are you kidding me? Uh, <laughs> three, day, three days before the 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 Peacemaker premiere. Our Norwegian agent decided to drop us. What? Yeah, <laughs> and they knew about they actually they knew about the peacemaker thing, yeah. but they didn't think it would make such an impact. So we only discovered it ourselves because we were you know kind of you know on their backs saying you know can you book some more shows you know with, like eager to get out and play, and they felt like you know. Ah, oh, it's not it's it's not that you know big an interest in the band and you know uh, oh. don't push us you know yeah you know, we're not pushing we're just asking uh, can we could we book a couple of gigs yeah, ourselves can you, can you just we just want to go out play yep and then you know some days ahead of the premiere I discovered uh, <laughs> that they had dropped us on their artist rooster and I I sent them a mail saying you know. Is this true? I mean, have you dropped us without even letting us know because we kind of wanted to play? I mean, yeah. we're a band. Every band wants to play. They didn't even give and you the option. Just shut up and say whatever. We don't want to play, but we are booking agents. 
so so they yeah they told us that they had dropped us and uh, wanted to you know um you know they, they didn't want to work with the band anymore because uh, you know they d- didn't know how to sell the band and you know what but then uh, once peace you know, you know out, oh, what about come... the peacemaker thing yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, do they come crawling then, back to you like, oh, we kind of made a mistake. And then everything, then everything exploded, and we're like in the middle of a storm. I mean, there were interviews every five seconds that we call in from the Norwegian broadcasting. Wow, it's fucking crazy, you know. And, <laughs> and, and I had to call a friend of mine in Madrid, a guy named Fransca- Francesco. Uh, who runs a big agency there. I mean, man, can you help us out? <laughs> We need someone to book the band. Oh, yeah, yeah man. And a couple of other friends that, you know, uh, <laughs> helped us out in the meantime while trying to find find a proper, you know, solution, yeah. a long-term solution. So only today we just uh, just uh, signed with a, with a big agency called uh, All Things Live and uh, uh, new management and... Uh, And we still have the other guys on board working like hell. It's like American dates and European American dates. dates finally. Awesome. Wow. Been we're gonna get, we'll get you over here. Yes, yeah. we're coming over. See? Yeah. We're we're over when, when, when the band was at its peak back in the early 2000s or mid 2000s, you never actually got to play here, did you? No. The offers were too small. <laughs> you know, in yeah. Norway. Ah, I'm not kidding you. I mean, in Norway, uh, our fees were like very big. So uh, we went where the money was because we thought, you know, this right. is going to last for the summer. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, let's take the money and go. <laughs> and and so Sweden turned down Sweden Rock Festival. They were paying enough. We had a big offer, you know, yeah, let's let's go for the money. This is probably not going to last for more than, than a half, half a year. And it lasted and we regret to this day i mean that we didn't you know uh do more overseas and of course elsewhere we 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 75 of our gigs were in norway and we played like three gigs a day it was crazy days crazy times. Here's, here's a question i mean how does james gunn discover wigwam and then end up using them in the show he's a he's a fan of that kind of music in our genre so Uh, it turns out he had been a fan for quite a, quite a time, and and he also he has also t- uh, told um, told a journalist that he when he discovered us he thought we were an, were an eighties band. Oh. So he, when he later discovered that what that album was from two thousand and ten, yeah, then he you know he got into us and hmm. long term fan. That's so cool. <laughs> It's you, got, cool. you gotta love that. So let me just quickly talk about that because the image of the band when you came out and the band's name—I mean, your glam and and Trond is teen. You've got Flash. You got the was was that sort of to be a little bit like a Steel Panther or, or like were, were you taking yourself seriously? Was it just sort of be like we're gonna celebrate glam and make it sort of a fun sort of kitsch thing, yeah. or were you like this is serious? This is our band and this is our image. Like was it for fun or was it like no? This is this is the band and we're just. You well, know? Mitch, their name is Wigwam. They're named after a tent. So, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. Uh, True. It was, it was all like, uh, uh, you know, uh, irony band, you know, because we, when we got this band together, let's face it, in 99, 2000, our kind of music, it was passe. Nobody played rock and roll like that. And it was like uh, so outdated. Yeah. Thanks, and, Nirvana. Yeah, and everything everything we we did back then was like, oh, it has to be this and too, not too much, but Bradley in your voice, and you know, I have to sing it like you know, uh, like yeah, Nirvana or Oasis or who the fuck. You had to sing depressed. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but we have never been depressed. So, so we put together a jam band just for fun, uh, and we were to play, you know, all. Funny old classics, you know, our style of music. The good stuff. Uh, every night. And we just had a great time doing that as a jam band. And then certainly someone wanted to book us for an 80s party. And back then I thought, you know, for, for me, I was too old anyway. I was like, I had passed 30, I, you know, too, too late for me to do anything. So I, I started making kind of music, tri- tribute shows, musical yeah. shows. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I thought, hey, 
this this might be a new product that we can sell to you know the parties I was working for. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I told the guys to to bring some you know old clothes from the eighties and you know this and that and uh, whatnot. So <laughs> we put together this image all by coincidence. Wow. And we call it Wigwam, the greatest show in the galaxy. And it went on like crazy. And then later, people started talk, to talk about this band. And I thought, you know, this is pretty humorous. I, maybe, I should, maybe I should make a story to go with this show. So I, I, I worked late every night and came up with some bizarre story that we actually were banned from, from the USA. Uh, we released albums in the late 60s and the start of the 70s. But it really went downhill and and we were drug addicts and we uh, we had you know we were drowning it's a in great death. backstory i'm already sold <laughs> yeah. it's a fantastic and, backstory yeah so so we emigrated to norway and and we took <laughs> we took norwegian names we infiltrated the norway and norwegian music industry playing in yeah. different bands as burnt auger tron and oystein <laughs> but then in 2000, we decided to, to get back together again and have a comeback as a wigwam. And we took back our, our uh, <laughs> born names, Glam, Teeny, Flash, and Sporty. And so, um, you know, sure, we had I think that's the most believable part of all this. Your born name is <laughs> Glam. Yeah. 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 Uh, it was great fun. It was all for fun. But, you know, after forget while, Sporty Spice. You got Sporty yeah. Wham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got and Glam Wham. After a while. After a while playing this music and all the covers that we obviously had written ourselves, our original material that was stolen from us in the early 60s, like Living on a Prayer, I Was Made for Loving, everything. Uh, we, 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 we thought it was so fun. And we started to, I mean, to get the urge for writing new songs, our own material as well. So when we played our own songs, like Bless the Night, one of the first ones, actually, Hard to be a rock roll, roller and stuff like that. We yeah. never, we never uh, introduced them as original songs. It was just like the other songs. So people who come to us after after the show asking, you know, that song "Hard to Be a Rock and Roller" by by Kiss, right? Uh, <laughs> ah, we don't know. You know, we didn't it's want a, to... Bon Jovi. That's Bon Jovi <laughs> song. <laughs> And then after a while, we decided to release our first album, Six Six Seven, The Neighbor of the Beast, and the rest is a wigwam story. <laughs> That's amazing that you sold them off as covers to make people yeah. think that they're like, because honestly, I mean, they're so awesome. We, yeah. we just wanted to check out if people, if people were, you know, as as uh, high on them as on the Heavens on Fire or other other cover songs. And yeah. you know what we discovered? We, we tried out different songs and we discovered that people were actually singing along to our songs as well. Mm -hmm. Thinking, you know, believing these songs were like- old Thinking they were Journey or something. Or so that was a cool, cool, cool gimmick. But, you know, then we re released our first album, 667, The Neighbor of the Beast, and, and we started to take it from there. So, but these Many. days, now we're, we're glad, we're, we're glad to just be ourselves. You're glad to be on Peacemaker. Yeah. yeah. Hey. I'm glad to be on Peacemaker. I'm glad to be just Olga and not not live the life as glam because that character almost killed me. You probably OD. <laughs> he was drinking too much and he was he was too nasty. Uh, we got to do an interview with you as glam. That'll be fun. Oh yeah, yeah. You, you 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 don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be hilarious. <laughs> That'd be great. That's like Steel Panther. They refuse I mean, to do interviews I mean, out of character. It will take you. Uh, you know, uh, if you go to 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 um, I should probably should not say this if you go to the youtube and you and you search for glam uh bbc kiev uh, eurovision interview when i was mounting the hostess you oh see boy. what the guy had to cope <laughs> with i mean that was you know a direct broadcast on bbc and i was licking uh the hostess <laughs> legs from the toes up to the front. oh my God, that, did that's they the end way up banning that's... you. Huh? Did they, did they ban banning you? you? No, I tell you what. Uh, I was invited the year after. They flew me to London, all the way from Norway, to do an interview about that interview. Wow. <laughs> yeah. They wanted me to tell them more about when I mounted the hostess. <laughs> 
<laughs> this Saturday oh, on BBC, oh, we just, catch up with Glam about his mountain. Yeah, it's situation. not my pri- proudest moment. I mean, we were we had we had we were partying as hell after you know the show. We made it to number nine, and we were drinking champagne, and I was in my spandex and everything. And then suddenly someone <laughs> comes up to to our, our our backstage area, telling me, you know, you are wanted on a direct broadcast in the tent, BBC's tent. Oh yeah, hell yeah, <laughs> you know. Wow. <laughs> oh, they didn't know what they were up to. <laughs> you Funny see what thing, North America has been missing out on for the last twenty years. I mean, I was, come on. I was going to say, get over funny, here. funny thing is that. <laughs> Uh, if you go to the BBC Broadcasting House in Manchester, they actually have a teepee set up outside. So when you, okay. I mean, it should have been a wigwam. <laughs> yeah, it should have. Should, but it's just, uh, anyway, listen, we, we need more wigwam in, in Canada and North America. Some of us have discovered the band and have heard of the band, but I'm glad that Peacemaker is finally giving you that door to walk through and just come and say, oh, hey, yeah. everybody. Are we, I mean, we, 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 we really appreciate this this shot. I mean, uh, who would have thought? And uh, and for us to see that people are now getting into the band and and uh, s- starting to to stream the band and wanting to book the band and the interest is like building up. Yeah, it's for us, it's a dream come true because see, we and- we thought this comeback might just disappear and then we we would be off to something else. Mm-hmm. And uh, and we we decided, you know, to actually work until like 2023 2024 before you know leaving the band and for good for good yeah yeah uh, yeah. continuing with our other work uh but now let's see because it's it's so fun and it's it's good to to be back and we we work so good together now so yeah. we, we write still write new songs today so we, you don't know might be in another album soon Listen, and if you can open the North American market, you can come. That's a lot of money you can come get over here. Come, come Look, work. I'd I'd go to Vegas to see Wigwam playing at the House of Blues and doing the songs. I mean, come on, that's, that's would, like a fun night. That would have been a dream come true for us. I mean, what we told our bookers is like, you know, don't get us wrong. I mean, uh, we love this situation and we really want to go out and play, but not like we used to do before. We're not going to sit in a tour bus in 200 days a year, you know, work like hell. I mean, let's face it. We're we're not getting any younger. And now we we just, we just want to, we we want to appreciate uh, what we do together and have a good time, play places we haven't played. We want to travel to to the U S do some American gigs some festivals uh have a good good life yeah. and uh, well we need we need hbo presents the peacemaker tour and throw you in firehouse yeah, and, and tiger tails something. and let's go yeah, yeah, awesome. that would have been something yeah i mean yeah i'm in um do we do we ask you the uh, the typical kiss question obviously you covered kiss on one of your albums um is that a paul stanley guitar back there no, that's a no. firebird. No, that's a firebird. I can't see. It's, my eyes are, are yeah, squinty. But uh, just quickly, uh, since you mentioned Heaven's on Fire, you covered Kiss before. Uh, talk to me a little bit about Kiss, because you've, you've gone out and done shows where you cover Queen, and you've done that, but you've never done sort of the the Kiss full makeup tribute thing. How come? Oh. Uh, you know, I've uh, never been into, you know, that kind of tribute shows. Uh, even when we when I do the, the Queen show, uh, I'm not doing that trying to pretend I'm Freddie Mercury. I I, yeah. I try to to do the songs personal and I we put on quite a show. Uh, the only only sign of Freddie Mercury on these shows are actually um yeah I think I have a mask here actually. This one. <laughs> well, you know what that's the cool thing about it though is the fact that you you're, you're showing it. Oh nice yes. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Isn't it though? It's fantastic. That's as close as you get to 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 Freddie Mercury but you know that we do you know I uh, we we do the songs and we 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 make a spectacle out of it, you know, doing lots of lots of dancers and pyrotechnics and stuff like that. Well, well, let me quickly. Well, I was yeah. going to ask you about really the spectacle cool. real quick because yeah. you're not just the singer. When you look at the credits of the Freddie Mercury show, your costume design, you've got other hats that you're wearing. Mm-hmm. Talk to yeah. me about that because you you you're sort of you see the whole vision. You you don't just show up and sing. You're you do you're the all. guy that sort of yeah. 
Yeah, I did, even designed all the spandexes that I used with Wigwam and all this, <laughs> the stuff there, and I had someone to make it because I'm, I, I can't do can't that. So, no, no, no. But, uh, right. but you know, to have to have a vision about how it's gonna look, and uh, you know, I see everything in like pictures. So uh, ever since I was a kid, I mean, I, I, I can, I hardly sleep at nights because because I I have all these, you know. I envision how things You're creative, be. you know. Yeah. Oh, the creative. Yeah, yeah I, I'm sure school wasn't for you. Sitting there doing math was probably not your thing. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Hey, look, the, they, they always say if you want something done right, do it yourself. And, I mean, at the end of the day, hey, if you have a certain vision in your mind, I mean, if you if nobody else can pull it off but you... I mean, you're the best person to do but it. I'll tell you what, though. That problem with having those visions is that you never get what's in your mind on paper no, or on. Right. So it just it drives you f cra right. Drives yeah. you crazy. Oh, totally. All the time. I'm, I'm, I'm drawing and trying to, you know, make people understand <laughs> and, what I'm. And what's in here just never yeah. gets there. Yeah, it's just. Oh, yeah. We did the first Queen show. I I remember telling my, my co-producer, you know, and then we we need to have this car, and you know, because we <laughs> we, we merged, you know, bicycle. I wanted to merge bicycle, and I'm in love with my car because I was coming out on a bicycle, you know, looking right. like a, a French yeah. tourist, you know, the loaf and everything. <laughs> <laughs> And doing doing that song, you know, all right, like to ride my bicycle, you know. And in the middle of that song, we would hear like, and a guy, one of the choir guys, would come in in a car, Ooh, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm in love with my car, and we would have this struggle between, you know, the cars, you know, the pollution side of it, and the bicycle. So I will. I will sell him the idea of bicycling. It's much better for you than driving a car. And wow. look here, we have nude girls as well. They were also bicycling. <laughs> Perfect. We had, yeah, we had model girls coming out in, in bikinis. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I convinced him, you know, to try it out and while doing the song. So he was bicycling. I stole the girls and the car. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Like to ride it where I like. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah. I'm hanging the car on the girl's spot. Has, has Brian May or Roger Taylor seen the Queen show? <laughs> I think they've seen some on the YouTube or something. I mean, we are we are really lucky that they haven't, you know, pulled the plug because I think right. we. Let's face it. I think we have. I think we really have promoted um, Queen a lot in Norway because yep. we have a big. Well, the show's been running ten years. Oh yeah, more. We 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 had a premiere in two thousand seven, wow. and the guys told me they wanted a a, a a a long break from Wigwam, and they didn't know when we were to get back together. Uh, that's pretty hard when that's your income. So I thought, you know, yeah, what to do? So I uh, I decided to to put my Queen show to life, and it started uh, as you know two weekends sold out in like a quarter, and then we did. Two more weekends, and then later, you know, 2021, next, uh, 2022 is now, yeah. Uh, 15 so years. We, yeah, and now we're doing only, like, uh, uh, the big arena shows in Norway. Mm -hmm. is a it, show where, a year. Where's the show we get put on? Is it in Oslo, or? And last time we did it in Oslo Spectrum, yeah. Mm -hmm. nice. Next time we're going to do it in Trondheim Spectrum. It's like the wow. like an eight, eight 9,000 capacity. I've been to Oslo wow. one time. It was absolutely beautiful. The cool thing about Oslo, Mitch, is that at the, the Hard Rock Cafe in Oslo, they have Alex Van Halen's original drum kit from Van Halen 1 on display. But the Hard Rock Cafe Oslo is no more. It's gone, right? It's gone. Yeah. Wow. Do you know what they do with the Hard Rocks when they close them? They, they did this in Montreal. They threw everything in the dumpster. Yeah. No. Trash outside. Yes. Yeah. So who knows where all that stuff is now? Yeah, it, when they closed the one in Montreal, they put everything in the dumpster out back. They didn't yeah. sell it off. They didn't return it to oh. Hard Rock Central. They took a, the whatever the Vinnie Vincent guitar or what I think they had a, a Gene Simmons bass or a Vinnie Vincent guitar. What a right Gene, in the fucking trash. In the trash, just like the booths and the chairs and the tables. You know, yeah. you had so they probably did the same thing in Oslo. And a bass, yeah. Jeez. Isn't that horrible? I know. So that so the next time you see that a that a hard rock is closing in any city, I will wait outside. Oh, wait outside. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in the backyard. Yep. Hey. yep. 
Is that a guitar? Is that a guitar? Uh, That's a guitar. Go, go, go. Is that Paul Stanley's <laughs> autograph? What, what, what? Yeah, get it, get it. <laughs> Mick Jagger's jacket, go get it. <laughs> oh, man. Well, all right, listen, it was go. so great to meet you. Uh, Wigwam, of course, Likewise. featured on the Peacemaker soundtrack, which is streaming now on HBO Max and Crave TV across Canada. Uh, you can catch the official Peacemaker official playlist on Spotify that's been personally curated by James Gunn, and you got Wigwam on there. You got all the other incredible bands. And uh, maybe we'll see some new music from Wigwam in, uh, in the next little while. Maybe. And don't forget, go visit wigwamofficial.com and book us for gigs in the USA. Yes. In Canada. There you go. Mitch, Merci. we'll throw a barbecue in the summer. We'll get, the, we'll get them to go oh. play. Yeah, come on. Bring them over. Let's go. We need some Wigwam. It's a, it's a fun time. It's a great fucking time. Great <laughs> albums. <laughs> Nonstop right. rock and roll. Yeah, Make it rock and roll fun and uh, lively again. <laughs> <laughs> Make it fun again. Yeah. 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 All right. Thanks a lot. This is so great to chat. We'll keep in touch. Merci. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Cheers. Right. Bye-bye now. Always a pleasure. Bye. Cheers. An all-new episode of the Mitchell Fun and Jeremy White Show. Tuesday at noon. Available wherever you stream.